Let's move over to the NBC. wide receivers on the waiver wire here. And like we did with running backs, we'll start with the notable wide receivers on the bye in week 13. Of course, Zay Flowers and Odell Beckham Jr. for the Ravens, Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis for the Bills, DJ Moore for Chicago. Over in Vegas, Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers, who had a good resurgent week last week. Minnesota, yeah. Justin Jefferson still trying to get healthy. Now he has some extended time. And Jordan Addison, who had a pretty tough Monday night football game, but still a guy that you would think you're starting in most cases anyway. No doubt. So, yeah, I mean, the, a lot of big names that you, uh, you're you not going to be uh, without. We've, it's better news with the wide receivers. Oh, yeah. Big so difference. So, a lot more. And so, again, like, I think this week especially, you just you want to try to play – the minimum amount of running backs that you can, and then you know, you'll know you use a wide receiver at your flex. And it starts with a guy that it, well, we've also been talking about for a few weeks now, but that's J Jaden Reed. Speaking yep. of the Packers in this resurgent offense, you mentioned the Chiefs game um, coming up. The Chiefs have struggled against the slot, which is where Jaden Reed is um, playing. And there's a little bit of Debo to Jaden Reed's game in terms of how they're using him, not Creativity. saying that they're yeah. not in terms of, you know, using him in the backfield and in, in terms of uh, trying to get him in motion, trying to get the ball in his hands in a bunch of different ways, had a, had an almost 27% target share last week. He's now scored in three straight games since week seven. He's the 23rd best wide receiver in fantasy. And again, we all sort of think Jordan Love might be good. So Jordan Love on the season now, he ranks ninth among quarterbacks in EPA per drop back. He ranks higher than Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence, Lamar Jackson. So interested for your breakdown, Connor, because to me, just comparing his two games this season against the Lions, early season against the Lions, he was just a mess. Like everything was out of rhythm. And then in Detroit on Thanksgiving, he looks like he's an absolute monster. Do you think this is real and what's changed? Well, I think number one, it's a young offense that guys are actually doing their job. You saw dysfunction yeah. those weeks, wide receivers running into each other, an offensive line that was trying to figure out the right combination with a ton of new faces, especially against Bakhtiari out again. So I think everything around him has gradually improved and gotten more steady. And this is a dude that's always had the talent. He's yeah. got a big arm. He can extend plays. He looks more confident. Uh, the turnover-worthy plays went down. So everything's looking in the right direction for Jordan Love. But I also think Matt LaFleur's called a really, really good offense around him finally, too. And Christian Watson's health. Christian Watson was that's not even in play thing. for yeah. a long time. Watson, I mean. And I the run game has struggled, so they've had to go to the air. Right. Yeah. Watson is the key to me. And Love has obviously made great strides, and I agree with everything he said. But the fact that Watson, Watson was a monster down the end of the stretch, at the end of the stretch last season. Like, Rogers, he was Rogers' guy. Rogers trusted him yeah. more than anyone else in that offense, and now it seems like he is back. Uh, and he had his best game of the season against Detroit. He's the guy that can go up and make a play for the yeah. quarterback. And without him, they didn't have anyone in the offense no. that would do that for Jordan Love. So to me, that's the big difference right now. But it is great to have Jaden Reed out there having success as well. And available in 52% of Yahoo right. League. So he makes our threshold. Next one is, <laughs> you know, we go from an emerging offense to um, – a stinky one. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is another guy we've talked about a decent amount, Pop Douglas. Demario Douglas is the lead wide receiver of the New England Patriots. We saw some Devontae Parker as well last week. But Demario Douglas now has four straight games with at least five receptions. Since week seven, he's got a 23.5% target share. And you like this matchup against the Chargers this week that have allowed the third most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. We expect them, whoever's quarterback for uh, the Patriots, to have to throw. And when they throw, they're likely going to throw to Demario Douglas, who's out there in 64% of leagues. Yeah, and I think this with the Chargers as well. Their non-Asante Samuel corners have been dreadful. So yeah. any matchup he sees that isn't him, I mean, the question is, Jay, is whoever's under center enough to get it done for Douglas, or does he just get the volume that it might not matter? I think the thing with Douglas, and it is relatively uninspiring because you don't want a piece of this New England offense, but he is a wide receiver one on an NFL offense that is going to be losing a lot of the time and has to throw. Right. And so even if they're running whatever the hell the Bears were running last time with their screen <laughs> offense, even if you're running that, he's still going to get receptions. So particularly in, in PPR, I think he'll have some value. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I mean, like, in a game in which they couldn't, score against the Giants yeah I mean you know I mean like he still went he went six for 49 he got you 10.9 fantasy points in a PPR format and like is that great no but like that's usable that's usable again in a, in a week in which there are six teams on a buy and there's not a lot out there in the waiver wire I think you could do worse than Demario Douglas and let's be honest you probably have our next one Curtis Samuel 72 percent available he's got the Dolphins then a bye week 
Week 12 against the Cowboys, 12 targets, 9 catches, 100 yards here for Curtis Samuel, who's been involved in this pass-happy offense this year. Yeah, uh, uh, right, and it's it's one of the reasons why he did well against uh, the Cowboys is where they struggle against the slot. They are being creative in how they're using Curtis Samuel. This matchup against the Dolphins, it should face a similar game script, right? So you've got, you've got a, an offense that's going to score a lot of points against Washington. There'll be a negative game script. They'll be throwing, and they'll be throwing against a team that struggles in slot coverage. Dolphins allow the eighth most receptions per game to the slot. And so Curtis Samuel, who is a talented player, he's good after the catch. And again, I mean, Howell's throwing it 40, 50 times a game. He has to. Like, they're just not running the ball effectively as well. 12 targets in week 12 when they were in crazy comeback mode against the Cowboys. And so when he sees at least 55% of the snaps this season, I expect him to do that on uh, Sunday against the Dolphins. He's averaging over 12 fantasy points per game. So. Yep. The thing with Samuel is his usage is just all over the place. Like some yeah. weeks he's just non-existent, and then last week he's wide receiver the one guy. on Thanksgiving. And I think the key thing with him is he is one of the most matchup dependent players in the league. Because if you are playing a team that has a bad slot corner and good outside corners, then they just go to him a ton. If you're playing a team that plays a ton of man coverage, then they go to him a ton disproportionately. So Miami's a bit of an awkward one because uh, they play a lot of zone coverage as opposed to man, but they're not great from the slot because you've got Jalen Ramsey and Xavier Howard on the outside. Yep. I think the to me, the tiebreaker is the fact that they're going to be double-digit underdogs and they're just going to have to throw. So you'd think Samuel would be out there a lot, especially after last week. Again, and we're not talking about superstars or guys that are going to make the love list. We're just we're talking about, hey, find me somebody on the waiver wire that could be usable this yeah, give week. Give me nine points. Vi viable yeah. flex. A viable yeah. flex this week. That's what we're doing here. Well, speaking of that, Jonathan Mingo of the Panthers, available in 95% of leagues at the Bucks this week. In Week 12 against the Titans, he had four catches for 60 yards. We talked about the dysfunction of this Carolina coaching staff right now. Thomas Brown will take over the play calling again after Frank Reich was fired. The thing is, as much as Mingo has had some volume, it has nothing has been smooth in this offense, no. including him. I think I've bet the over on Mingo. Mingo every week is set at like 29 and a half receiving yards. And each week I'm like, this guy's playing every snap. And he's the starting wide receiver on an NFL team. He can't be set that low. And I think I was two and seven betting that. And so I was like, so coming into this week, I'm like, oh, I'm done with Mingo. And then he goes for 60 yards and catches the over, of course. But, uh, I mean, he is out there. And there is, to your point earlier, there's more variance with the new coaching uh, around him. But just came for your thoughts, Connor. Like, Bryce Young, do you think Bryce Young is getting better? Because it feels like he's getting worse. Uh, yeah, I think, I think he's losing. Because you got to realize, you come from Alabama, where you're a dominant player across college football for two years, and everything's great around you, including yourself. So when you come into summer, you still have that confidence. Now you've been battered. Nothing's gone right for you. You're probably thinking, I just got everybody here fired. You start to lose that confidence. So, yeah, I think he has gotten worse, but everything around him has gotten worse. And Mingo right. was not a true wide receiver in college. He was a gadgety yep. Ole Miss player. Lane Kiffin got him a lot of weird scripted plays. He was great at that. Now he goes to the Panthers, and it's like, you got to be our number two. Good luck out there. So – it's, it's a mess. There's no way around it. Six targets in three straight games from Mingo. It's a good matchup against Tampa Bay, who allows the most yards per game to opposing wide receivers. And you said there's variance there. So we'll see. I, I think if, yes, I, I think if you are Bryce Young, given every given given all the givens, like he's not immune to the criticism. He's, he's not, you know, unaware of it, I'm sure. And then you also, again, just the success of C.J. Stroud. Just – you know, again, that's not his fault, you know what I mean? But the fact of the matter is, is that both guys went to rebuilding programs. They were 1-2 in the draft, and C.J. Stroud is balling out, and the Texans are on the verge of making the playoffs, and the Panthers have won one game. Weirdly, against C.J. Stroud, yeah. but, like, yeah. Frank Reich, who is, like, this this kind, beloved quarterback whisperer, that's the kind of the, the knock on him, and now he's been fired, and so – um, you know, yes, I, I would think if you were Bryce Young. David Tepper gave an amazing press conference, I think, this morning, maybe yeah. yesterday, where he was basically like, look, Frank Reich and Bryce Young, that was my decision. The buck stops with me. It's like, Bryce Young's still on your team. Yes. Like, he's still the number one pick. You've got to like, It was long-winded. Yeah. Was... And he, he and... couched it. He's like, we still believe in Bryce. Yeah. But it's like, uh, you're pretty clearly like, why are, you, why are you talking about C.J. Stroud? Just don't say C.J. Stroud's name because it's just right. the connotations for that. Team. Next up on the waiver <laughs> wire, Saints wide receiver, rookie wide receiver. He's available in 97% of leagues. Listen, with A.T. Perry, you're probably wondering, why the heck would I pick up a guy that had two targets, one catch, seven yards in Week 12? Well, Chris Olave left the game with a concussion. Rashid Shahid is dealing with a quad injury, reportedly unlikely to play this week. They have the Lions defense that – I'm going to give him a little break here, Jay. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Lions yeah, defense that's been vulnerable. Boy. So, A.T. Perry, you probably don't know what you're getting, but the fact is he has to be out on the field. 
Well, it's like the Pop Douglas thing, where he's, right. a, he's wide receiver one somehow, I think, for an NFL team particularly. So it seems like Rashid Sheed is not going to play. He's unlikely. Chris Olave will see with the concussion. I think rare. about one in five players come back the next week from yeah, a concussion. It's very so rare. I would expect that he doesn't go. Particularly, as he dealt with concussion last year too. So I think that it'll probably be At Perry wide receiver one against this Detroit Lions defense, which is a mess right now. So he's probably flex viable, which is a strange thing to say out loud. He's He's played 80% of the snaps, basically, each of the last two weeks. So, yep. yeah, we like A.T. Perry. Our last one here, Greg Dortch. Mm. <laughs> Greg Dortch back on the, the waiver. The human Dortch, Doesn't baby. it feel good to have He's Greg back. Dortch back? 98% available. He's against the Steelers. Only three catches, 27 yards and a touchdown, but nine targets. Michael Wilson has missed the last two games. When Michael Wilson tells you, it'll be interesting to see how this changes for – the human and Hollywood George. Brown isn't 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 you know um, doesn't feel like he's 100% either. But 17 targets the past two weeks as well. He's averaging double-digit fantasy points. We like the human Dorch here, and it does seem like as Kyler Murray gets back in his feet, he doesn't feel like Kyler Murray wants to. Whether it's because he doesn't have Michael Wilson, because Hollywood Brown is banged up, or they're just paying more attention to him, but it does feel like as you watch these games, there's more and more line of scrimmage stuff, short stuff, yeah. than there is taking a bunch of deep shots as well. So. Um, yeah, in deeper leagues, especially if Wilson misses time again this weekend, the human Dorch back again. Let's recap Barry's Week 13 top wide receiver waiver targets. We started with Jaden Reed, who's available in 52% of leagues. He's been heavily involved in the Packers <laughs> offense that's had some success in recent weeks with Jordan Love improving. Pop Douglas, available in 64% of leagues with Curtis Samuel. He's been up and down for Washington, but you catch him on a good week and you could have a very viable wide receiver there in your lineup. Jonathan Mingo and A.T. Perry available in majority of leagues, and the same can be said for Greg Dortch. With hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.